you love the night. There, the insomniac stroller refreshes his gaze. You feel the North Sea pounding in the dark. The succession of columns of the Galerie Royale, the deserted settings of the town, give shape to your lone meditations. The beach of sand and ashes, the somber mass of the sea and its fringe of phosphorescent foam hold a mystery which you pursue in measured steps, as if in a waking dream. A century later, it is our turn to contemplate the beach at Ostend. The images before us are superimposed on those you once painted. An invisible presence, yours, haunts these empty spaces and deserted landscapes. We would like to have a dialogue with your painting, which reaches us as a personal, silent message. Your paintings bear witness to your unobtrusive existence, restoring in so many fragments the closest image of an intimate truth. A few letters, four or five photographs, few traces remain of your life at the turning point between two centuries in Ostend. I was born in Ostend on the 31st of July, 1881, to a gentle, melancholic mother and a violent, excitable father. I have vivid memories of my childhood up to the day they put me in school. From then on, my soul was stolen from me and I've never found it again. This sorrowful quest is the whole story of my painting. Your bedroom is the theatre for a revelation. You show it at the end of the day, at the hour when furniture and objects metamorphose before being shrouded in silence. This empty place, perfectly ordered, evokes breath being held, the ghostly presence of a body. The night sets out the paraphernalia for a strange ceremony. A feeling of dread, similar to that which used to grip you as a child before you fell asleep, distills its silence. At the age of 18, you enroll at the Bruges Academy of Fine Arts. But after a few months, you abandon your studies. You will be self-taught. Anything to do with teachers or the academy horrified me. I no longer wanted to see anybody treating everyone as enemies. I worked shut away at home all day long. At nightfall, I would go out in all weathers, walking for hours by the sea or across fields. To those around me, I was a source of amazement and scandal. Second of February, 1902. You are 21 years old. For the first time, you adopt the pose you will repeat many times over the years. You look at yourself in the mirror, over your shoulder, and you draw yourself. 
for the first time we meet your gaze. Your face is marked by great inattention. You draw it without indulgence. You record this closed-off quality, this solitary state. Your painter's gaze is already keen and searching. It seems to penetrate what it sees. Later, in the course of a confrontation that could be described as both disclosure and combat, your gaze becomes hypnotic, haunted. At the age of 21, you are taken on by the Brussels publisher Edmond de Mont, who publishes such famous writers as Émile Verharen and Stéphane Mallarmé. For his books, he commissions covers and illustrations from well-known artists. You are introduced into the very heart of the most lively artistic debates of your time. In his office, Edmond de Mont has a charcoal drawing by Odilon Redon, representing Christ, which you contemplate every day. Great staring eyes raised towards heaven, a striking light coming from the left. Your self-portrait in 1908 bears a strange resemblance to the drawing. On frappe à la petite porte. Entrez. Voilà qui pleut déjà. Peut-être en orage là-bas. Edmond de Mont publishes Metternich's plays in three volumes. He lends you his personal copy, and there in the printed book, you create 348 wash drawings in Indian ink and watercolor. Il a embrassé notre roi Marcellus. Les fiancés. Oh, les fiancés ne boivent pas beaucoup. Allons, bonne nuit. Je vais à la cuisine, on n'y boit pas de l'eau claire non plus. Pas encore. Bonne nuit. Si, si, le ciel est tout bleu. Et la forêt. Oh, toute la forêt. Merci, ma mère. The world of poetry is close to you. You share with it a certain harmony, frightened and somber. When Matelink writes of La Princesse Malène that the presence of death, infinite, shadowy, hypocritically active, fills every interstice of the poem, it sounds like the echo of your own preoccupations. The beauty of your drawings and the freedom of their layout on the page are not intended to illustrate. They are the descant to the enigmatic words of Matterlink's characters and evoke the sets and design of his theatre. Oh man, you are nothing but a fleeting dream, a sorrowful reverie. You exist only through pain, through the sadness of your soul and the eternal melancholy of your thoughts. Chateaubriand, Lautriamont, Nietzsche. These writers lend a somber inspiration to your drawings. Above this portrait of Nietzsche, you note... All words are prejudice. A little later, over another portrait, you cross out the inscription. You seem to distance yourself from literary references. Henceforth, you declare that a painter lives through his eyes. You seek to paint silence. 